Hey, Zen Brooke here with my Fear Free Cancer Journey. I'm loving being able to share this with you because I'm having so many interesting insights as I'm going through this. And, and one of them was cancer shame. So what do I mean by that? And when I was younger, like in my 20s, I would usually get, uh, when I got sick, I would get embarrassed. I'd be like ashamed, like I, I didn't take good care of myself somehow or there's something wrong with me. And it's interesting because I was just starting to learn about um, manifestation and how our thoughts create our reality, right? And that we're a vibrational match. I learned all this um, when I started studying Abraham Hicks in 1993. Oh my gosh, dating myself. But, uh, and so what, what happened for me, what that triggered is a sense of shame. If anything in my life wasn't going well, I internalized it to mean that, that there was something wrong with me, that, that, that I was broken and, and that other people would know my brokenness because I was manifesting my own ex inner experience and that inner experience was creating crud, right? And so what ended up happening is I remember as I began to teach this work in like the early 2000s, um, the internal guidance system work, as a teacher who was supposed to be a master or uh, at least excelling at this type of information, if anything went wrong, I wouldn't want to tell anyone. And I remember specifically thinking at one point, we, I had a, I had a, uh, a cancer scare in my mid thirties and some cells looked off and we tested them and it was like, they were precancerous. In fact, it is in the same area. They ended up 15 years later kind of developing, but it never showed on mammograms. I had them every year. But um, when the biopsy was done, I didn't tell anybody. I told just a couple friends of mine and I really kept it to myself. And I was, I was feeling that shame. And over the years of just cleaning things up and refiguring what is this manifestation energy, the law of attraction really about, I came up with a completely different awareness that, that what we get to us is a reflection and a mirror of who we are. Right? The law of attraction is more like bringing us a mirror in front of our face that we can see the things that, that here in our soul journey, in this lifetime, we have the opportunity to clean it up. And then I had, I've created all these tools on how to do that, on how to polish your mirror. And what I found was I was so surprised because I've been polishing my own mirror for like 24 or five years or something and really looking at this from a particular mindset, this, this experience of the planet that we live on. Um, that I don't have any shame that why ever, whatever reason that this is here and why ever this is happening. Um, I don't even know if why ever is a good statement, but whatever, um, why ever this is happening is, is for my benefit. And I feel a lightning and an opening when I say that, and it's, and it's, and it's guiding me in a way there's things that I need. My people around me need my call them my soul family. You have a soul family that comes down here and gives you lessons. Some of them are great and some of them are a pain in the, you know what, but, uh, there's still soul family and they're still helping you with lessons you need to learn. And this cancer is part of that experience for me and the people around me. And I'm learning so much already. I, I found that I don't feel ashamed, which was, is amazing. And that I feel really great and open that this is happening, that something miraculous, I don't know how, but it's going to be the best thing that could have happened this experience. I've slowed down already and I'm taking, uh, things off my plate that I really don't need to do. And I'm spending more time with my kids and my husband and nature and the dogs, you know, and it's just been super cool, this experience. And so I haven't been feeling shame. I've been feeling gratitude, which is the thing they say, you need to, you know, gratitude and humor are the things you need to do when you're terminally, I'm not terminally, but when you have a terminal diagnosis that could turn terminal, you need to like lighten it up and clean up your, your vibration and your frequency and your mind and all of that. And I'm finding that I've already done that through using my internal guidance system. And now there's this last piece about priorities and what's important to me and also how to ask for help and how to hand things off to competent people to do for me because I'm a little little bit of a control freak. And, um, <laughs> and these things are, are really been a blessing. And I'm just surprised. I know a lot of other teachers who've had illness and they've hidden it from their 
their community and students. And, uh, and I understand that. I understand not wanting to show weakness or also not wanting that level of attention shined like a spotlight into your life, your personal life when you're a teacher in the public eye. And uh, I was just having such, I've been having such an amazing experience with this journey that I want others to be able to have a journey like this if something dire, unpleasant and frightening happens in their lives, I want them to be able to notice and see that there's a change, there's a difference, there's a possibility of having it be actually exquisite and important and rich and lush, the highs and the lows. So it's been really interesting to dig through all this stuff and uh, I'm really enjoying the process. So that's my update for today. Thanks so much. Sending you love and blessings. Bye.